So let's check out the easiest way to install Arch Linux. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And today I wanted to show you guys the install script, which is the fastest way to get Arch installed on your hardware. And I did a video a while back, I think about a year ago, showing you guys this same script, how to actually get, you know, Arch Linux installed very quickly. And they did some updates to this script and I'll show you guys all the updates, uh, but it's super cool, it's super easy to use. So let's hop over to orchlinux.org and check out how to get the ISO. And then I'll walk you guys through how to install Arch Linux using this script. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, cool. So I'm at orchlinux.org. This is the official website where you can get Orch Linux. And basically all you have to do is go hit download uh, and you can get the latest copy of Orch Linux. And there's multiple ways to download it. You can use the bit uh, torrent link um, they do point you to the installation guide, but the ISO is 818 uh, gig megabytes. And if you scroll down, you can go down and find the mirrors. All you have to do is click on the closest mirror to you, uh, and that'll download the, well, let's go to one of them. I'm gonna just go to uh, the United States because that's one of the closest ones. Well, it don't matter. I'll just go to any of them. I'll go to the Germany server. Uh, but as you can see, all you gotta do is grab the ISO. Um, so Arch Linux ISO, and then they have the SHA-256 uh, file, so you can verify that you're getting it from the right location. Uh, but that's essentially how you get Arch Linux. And then you can install it on the ISO. You can use the DD command. I've did a video showing you guys how to use the DD command. It's super simple to use uh, to write the ISO to a USB drive. But that's pretty much it. So let's hop over to my virtual machine so we can get this thing installed. All right, cool. So I got the ISO booted up and this is the first thing uh, that'll pop up. It's basically a grub menu uh, and it get it has a couple options for you. Uh, as you can see, it says uh, Orch Linux install, which is the first one. Uh, Orch Linux uh, BIOS with speech. Second one, the boot existing OS. That's if you have an OS already installed on the system uh, and then run uh, mem tests. Uh, so that'll test your RAM or memory on the system. Then you got your hardware information, reboots, and then power off as well. Uh, what we're gonna do is select the first one. That's the easiest one, or that's some, you know, the default. So just go down and run that, and then it, it will boot up the, you know, ISO. And basically what it's doing is loading everything in the menu into memory, I mean. And so we should uh, be booted up in a second. All right, cool. So, uh, sorry the text is kind of small, but we're gonna work with it, and hopefully this works out, you know, good for everyone. But as you can see, it drops you to a terminal, and all you have to do is type Orch install. That's the script name. So Orch install, and then I'll also have um, I'll create a uh, a blog post that uh, covers all the commands that I run, so you guys can kind of follow along with me, but Orch install. And then as you can see, it'll it'll check to see if you have internet connection. That's one of the first things. It'll update the Orch Linux key ring. Uh, so you have connections to the repository, just verifying all that for you. Uh, now, as you can see, it's a very simple script. It's totally different from before. Uh, basically, all you're doing is setting a whole bunch of, let's say variables. Uh, if you've done programming, this is all we're doing is setting variables for the script. Uh, and it needs your input in order to create those variables or put those variables in so the script will run properly and install the operating system. So the first one is the Orch install language. Uh, so that's already set for me, English. 
uh, US on a keyboard uh, layout. Now the next thing is the mirror region. And you wanna go down and uh, all you had to do is press enter. That's all I did was press enter and it'll bring up a secondary menu that allows you to set check your uh, region. And the menu is super simple as you can see up at the top but what it says is select one of the regions to download packages from uh and so the menu options are escape to skip which we don't want to skip it uh control c to reset that'll reset your selection that you may have selected and then tab to select so all we have to do is go to our region which i know mine is way at the bottom so united states and hit tab and you'll see the asterisk pop up there next to uh united states so that's what we want to do and then in order to move forward past this just press enter boom there we go and now we're back to that main menu and like i said it's going to do this in in each step each one each one of the steps that you want to go through uh so we have uh locale so english us that's fine uh, UTF-8 for the local encoding, uh, the drives. Now this is the hardware setup or the hard drive setup. Uh, so if we press enter, uh, you'll see it'll pick up your drives that are on your system. It'll already scan whatever drives. It even scans the USB as well, or it sees the USB as well. Uh, but what we want to do is use that VDA. That is our virtual hard drive. Uh, it's 32 gigs so you just go to that one select it by hitting tab press enter and boom good to go now the disk layout this is how you set up your disk as far as partitions all that good stuff uh, so let's press enter there and then there's two options here you can select what to do with each individual drive which is kind of like a manual partitioning you just go through set up your manual partitions uh, for that drive specific and none of this is being done by the way just so you guys know none of this is being done you're setting the variables for what the script is going to do when it actually gets to the point where we run it. now the second option is wipe all selected drives and use the best uh effort default partitioning layout so that's what we're going to use that's what i recommend you guys use uh it'll take that one drive boom uh install the operating system and you get to go so let's press enter and then also one cool thing about it like um i recently did this i recently ran through and did the wipe all selected drives uh and i had two hard drives in there uh and i selected both of those drives as the operating system this script automatically knew that i wanted the boot directory on the first drive which was smaller as well as the root directory on the smaller drive as well and then i had a second drive on the system uh, and this was physical hardware that I installed in one. I had a second drive that was like a terabyte or so. It automatically knew to put the home directory on that drive. So that's where all, you know, my stuff. So this is a awesome, you know, add on or feature they've added to the script uh, by just using that wipe all selected drives, you know, and use the best effort. It'll, it'll kind of figure out based on the drives that you select and everything, what you're trying to do. So let's press enter there. Uh, and you select your file system. You could do ButterFS or you could do uh, EXT4 or F2 file system and XFS. XFS. I always mess that up, but uh, uh, EXT4 is what we want to go with. Uh, and then, all right, watch this. If I go back up to the disk layout, it'll show you your disk layout right there. So this shows you what it's actually going to do. So you got your primary drive, which is your boot directory, it's mounted at boot. Uh, this is your root directory. So it uh, does 200 and something megabytes for the uh, boot and then the remainder of the drive for root, home, and all that stuff. Now, one other thing you could do is encrypt the password or put an encrypt encryption on your home directory. Uh, we're not going to do that, but you can and it actually works. So uh, you, you don't have to worry about anything with that. Now you can select your bootloader. I'm gonna go with the default, which is grub, uh, swap. Uh, you can set up your swap. Uh, so I always just turn that on true and it'll automatically figure out how much swap you may need. Uh, host name. Now this is where you want to set your host name. If you want to change the name of your system to something, I'll just leave it at the default, which is Orch Linux. And then the root password, if you want to set one, I'm not going to set one. I'm going to keep the root account disabled. Uh, 
but this is where you select your user or create your user account under user account and it pops up three menus or three options in the menu add user confirm and exit or you know cancel so let's hit add user and then it's going to ask you for a username so i'm gonna create josh boom and then it's going to ask you for the passwords for josh and like i said all this stuff is being put in memory uh and you know set as at variables now at the bottom it says uh do you want josh to be a super user and of course we do boom and then we can go down to confirm and exit boom and we're good to go so we got that one user account created now one another cool thing profiles uh if we hit it go in profile you have four different um options you got desktop which will allow you to select the desktop environment which i'm gonna do uh the minimal it's a very basic installation allows you to customize uh orange linux as you see fit so that's the minimal uh that's that's a good place to start if you don't want a desktop environment you want to go through and install it yourself then you have the server so this is awesome you know you can go through and select the packages that you want to install as far as setting up a server if you want to set up a web server you know nginx whatever whatever you want to use um and then XOR. So install the minimal system as well as XOR and graphics drivers. Now, what we're going to do is do desktop. Uh, and I just wanted to show you guys the options that you have under the desktop environment. So you got pretty much all the desktop environments. Uh, awesome, uh, BSPWM, Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, Enlighten, Gnome, i3, KDE, LXQT, Mate, Qtile, Sway, uh, XFCE4 and that's what I'm gonna select I'm gonna go on select XFCE4 well actually let's try something different well I hope it doesn't mess up during the um, you know the install let's uh I don't know do deep in let's do deep in let's check out deep in so let's press enter there uh, it's gonna ask you if you want to use what graphics drivers you want to use I'm gonna do our uh, open source uh, which is a default so boom and then now the next thing is audio. If you want to use audio, I'm gonna just go to install pipe pipe wire. Even though this is in a virtual machine, I don't really have audio, so you won't hear it. Uh, but kernel, you can select the kernel. Uh, if you want to uh, additional packages, if you want to just hit enter and then type those packages out with a space. I'm gonna just hit enter again to skip it, but no additional packages. And then now this is an important step. Most people when they install Arch. Uh, they'll install it and forget to set up networks your networking um, so I'm glad they put this in the script uh, that way when the system comes up you're not trying to figure out how to get um, your networking installed sometimes when I'm, I'm and I've made this mistake as well I've had to uh, reboot the system back into the live ISO after I did an install because I didn't have networking uh, go back into Chirrut and install my networking packages because the internet would only work on the live live iso you know i couldn't get it to work on the system so yes i messed up on this so you want to make sure you definitely uh, make this selection but network configuration just go in here what i typically do is the network manager uh which is fine that'll work you you'll be up and running when you get on the system you know with networking and then the last thing or second to last theme is time zone so you can go in here uh select your time zone uh i'll go down and go in and do it uh but you could do this you can obviously do this after the fact after you get the system up and running running uh so you can you know have accurate time so let's go amazon i mean america and then los angeles so let's press enter there uh, and then automatic time sync true optional repositories if you want to add some other repositories now we're good to go you can save this configuration or you can install or inbox uh abort and so what we want to do is install so what it's going to do is take all our options uh all our configurations that we put you know in memory and then it's going to use that through the install script so all we have to do is sit back and relax and i'll let it go through it's going to pop up with this just showing you the script layout and that's basically all the changes you made if you understand coding uh you can look at that and you can see that majority of that is you know the information that you put into the file and it puts that information into the format so it can be read by the script and then install the operating system so all i did was press enter 
and that'll go through the process. As you can see, it's doing the formatting of the drives, and now it's basically done with that. Now it's installing all our uh, packages. All right, guys, so the installation is complete, and that's how simple it is to install Arch Linux now uh, using this script. Now, as you can see, you have uh, a couple options here. You can uh, basically uh click yes uh to go into the post uh installation configuration that allows you to install other packages and all that stuff like if you forgot to select your networking then you can install your network manager you know under here um in anything any other packages you may have thought of uh after installing uh the operating system or if you want to make some configuration changes uh to the system now we don't have anything uh to install so I'm gonna just go down to no, uh, press enter, and it'll drop us back down to the live ISO. So we get to go. All we have to do is type reboot, and that'll reboot the system, and then boot into our OS. So boom, I'll be back when it comes back up. Boom, and as you can see, we got our grub menu. Uh, you select Orch Linux, it'll automatically select it and boot up into the operating system. And then uh, I'll create, correct the resolution but it looks like it kind of corrected itself uh for my install but whatever uh so this is a login screen and we have deep in os uh and that's super easy you know what i'm saying i don't know if you guys have ever done a orch install but you know what i'm saying it's it can be intense going through each one of those you know things that you need to do in order to build the system build a system from scratch which is super cool and super rewarding at the end of it once you build it from scratch but once you've experienced that and let's say you just want to get the system up and running uh you know what i'm saying you can just go on in you know install it using the script especially if you're like on a deadline you want to get your system back up uh super quick uh this is a quick way of doing it you know what i'm saying and make sure you have a backup of all your stuff though you know what i'm saying if you're gonna do like a reinstall uh of the operating system this is a super quick way of doing it but as you can see boom we are in deep in os and i won't go through the operating system i just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to install so uh it didn't take me long at all i think uh this video is about 20 minutes but i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it down so it might be like 15 or so uh but super simple process you know what i'm saying and like i said if you got any questions or if you need any help uh feel free to leave some comments down in the comments you know below or whatever uh ask me whatever questions uh and like i said i'll put together uh, a blog post on my website uh that'll walk you guys through how to do this on your own you can just copy i mean at the end of the day it's not difficult i'll just take kind of some screenshots of what i did and put them up there uh so you guys can kind of follow along and see what i did through the install or you can refer back to this video if it's you can pause you can always pause and i'll um put some timestamps in here as well uh so you guys can just you know kind of jump back and forth between you know what i'm actually showing you guys uh within the video but i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the keep it techie channel i definitely appreciate it and if you want to support the channel you know you can always become a member of the channel that you know allows me to keep producing great content for you guys uh and sorry it's been a little while uh i took a little time off from the channel because uh if you've been following my instagram you know i'm actually building out my new uh rendering rig you know what i'm saying with the amd you know ryzen 9 uh, 7900x uh, that I'm building out in order to help me you know with the rendering uh, videos and all that stuff so I can produce better content for you guys so I hope you guys have a wonderful day and of course keep it techie